Bonjour. Guten Tag or good morning. Habari sa asubuhi. I know some of you will understand, but let's move to the next one. Qu'est-ce que vous motiverez à déménager dans la petite? I don't know if I got it right, but then let's go to the other one. Was was motivate we click is motherland zu zahin and then ni 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 hasa kina chukocha kuhamia inchi ya mama i know i didn't get it right i was trying my best and i know some of you would have been like what is echo trying to say anyway at first one was good morning in english in my language i would say mama hum achi all right and then the other one was what really motivates you to move to the motherland ebenazi no show nkran me pede eba africa manum this is language now people can understand i know most of you will understand um because i spoke uh german i was trying to speak like a german i did the 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 french and i did swahili these three languages so i greeted you in both languages and i asked you what really motivates you to want to come to the motherland in these languages while i'm speaking english a lot of you are understanding me but i know part of you will understand what i said in the other languages and part of you wouldn't understand now due to the following trade intermarriages school and all these activities that goes on daily in the human lives a lot of people would want to learn certain languages in order for them to move around in order for them to trade in order for them to have a conversation fruitfully about whatever event that they are into that leads to my conversation today about one of the major things or items you should look at when you are moving to the motherland echo, echo, echo yes when it comes to language there are wolipa languages in this world let's take Africa. I use the word wolipa, right? Or woli wolipa because the 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 patwa when I speak to a lot of uh, Jamaicans they use the word wolipa which they say means a lot of. Yes. So very soon, you know, when he asks me, "Echo, how are you?" I say, "Midea so." You know what I'm saying? I try to learn few words and then when I speak to other uh people with other languages, I try to learn one or two things like uh good in ta good morgan. So when it come to Ghana, or Africa. Let's take Africa. We have about 3000 different languages spoken in Africa. I believe that before now Africans should have been speaking a similar language. But due to colonization, you know, the 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 colonizers who came and separated Africans. That is where now you go to certain part of Africa, they speak Portuguese. Yes, when you go to Equatorial Guinea they speak Portuguese. Now when it come to other countries like Ghana, we speak a whole lot of English. Yes, ours is English, basically English. Well, there's a little bit of French which I would say about 15% of Ghanaians speak French. You don't have you can't walk around Ghana and get people speaking French. They only do it because they went through school to learn it, all right? And then when you go to and then Nigeria they speak English as well. There's a little bit of French in there. And then when you go to Kenya there there's the Swahili, there's a bit of English over there. There are international languages that are spoken here in Africa. We start with Amharic. When we went to Ethiopia, I think that is their major language, right? Yeah, Amharic. Uh one of my sisters learned uh, how to greet. Uh I forgot and if if you're from Ethiopia please put it up as a comment say maybe good morning how are you doing put it up as a comment in your language so when it comes to Amharic there are a lot of uh, African country that speak that language and then we go to Hausa okay Hausa there's a bit of Ghanaians who speak Hausa when you go to Togo when you go to Benin and more of Nigeria and Niger they speak a lot of Hausa in there so I'm talking about the I mean I think five major languages that is spoken internationally here in Africa. And then we can go to Swahili. I would say Swahili takes the major part because we have Rwanda, we have Kenya, we have Tanzania, we have Malawi, uh Zimbabwe, we have um Rwanda, I mean we have Burundi, we have Zambia, Uganda. They all speak Swahili. Okay, so 
some of them have it as a major language okay some of them has it as a major like tanzania has swahili as its major language when it comes to uh, other countries like from those that i mentioned they have it as a second language or like a third language or uh, just a minority of people speak that language and when it comes to portuguese all these countries some of them have a major language which is the, which is the portuguese but others have it as a second language or just a minority of people in there speak that language so when it comes to portuguese we have angola we have equatoria guinea we have mozambique and a bit of those around like the zimbabwe zambia south africa namibia they speak a little bit of uh, portuguese and now let's come to the almighty arabic a lot of people speak more of the arabic language so we have tunisia morocco algeria libya egypt sudan chad niger mali they all speak arabic so at a point i remember when uh ghana uh the education system was trying to you know change the system they they made mention that we should add arabic to our language so it's going to be english which is the first the second will be french and then the third will be arabic but i'm yet to see um you know this thing materialize in most of the schools here in ghana i know when it goes to the muslim schools they learn arabic you know basically uh as part of their subject but when you go to my school or government schools most of them don't learn arabic and then let's go to english ghana english throughout <laughs> when it comes to ghana it's english throughout nigeria it's english uh, a bit of Cameroon, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. I know they are also into, you know, speaking English. This, and then French. French, you go to Chad, Niger, Algeria, Mauritania, Burkina Faso, Guinea, Ivory Coast, Togo, Benin, which is like a neighboring country to Ghana, Equatorial Guinea, a little bit of it, Gabon and Congo. These people speak French. So enough of that. When you're making your plans to come and live on the motherland, you should basically, I think, look at the language as your first point of uh, consideration. Because when you go to a certain country and then you can't speak their language, it is very difficult. I went to Togo and Benin in 2020, I guess, and I had to use Google Translator. Yes, I had to use Google Translate. Even when I wanted to buy water, I either have to make a sign like, and then they, I'll pay them and then they give me the change back. Or if I want, I remember we went to a restaurant, I told them I want this and they brought that. And I had to take my phone and like use Google Translator. So from uh, English to French. So I would type whatever I want to type, I'll show it to them. <laughs> oh God. And then when I went to Rwanda too, I think Rwanda has about 80 to 90% of the citizens speaking their language yes uh and then there's a language they call Kis Kis is it kiswahili or no there's there's a language that they speak i have forgotten if you if you're from um um rwanda can they put it up as a comment and it got to a point i had to use my phone to also translate the uh, whatever what, that i was trying to you know convey to them in english to uh, their language which was pretty nice but you know it has gotten to a time that i feel like if africans should come up with one language it will really help so when you're making plans to come to ghana or africa look or consider the language people call me echo um how's ghana you know i moved to gambia i moved to tanzania i moved to uganda and the language barrier I don't think I, I, I can survive over there, so I want to move to Ghana. Yes, Ghana is open to everybody, but don't also say that because Ghana is open to everybody, you want to come. No, consider certain things. If it's about the language that is, you know, causing that barrier for you, then yes, you might want to move to any African country that speaks English, especially brothers and sisters from Jamaica, from, from Germany, I guess, from US, from Canada, from the UK. They can easily move to Ghana, Nigeria, Liberia, Sierra Leone, because English is our major um, medium of communication. So apart from English, Ghanaians don't really speak other languages, apart from the typical Ghanaian language, which is the, the, the Ki, the Fante, the Ga, the Ewe, and then the rest. So basically this video wanted to share with you what you should consider when you're moving to the motherland. If you wanna to come to Ghana, 
you should consider the language that we speak. If you want to go to South Africa, you should consider the language that they speak. If you think you're ready to learn, then that is good. If you think you're ready to move with whatever you know, then you should consider, you know, moving to a country that you can speak their English. So if somebody from um, maybe Spain, a diaspora from Spain, want to move to the motherland, you should definitely move or consider an African country that speaks Spanish. If anybody from the Portuguese speaking languages want to come to Africa, they should look for... Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't come to Ghana because we don't speak your language. You, you, you can still come. There are a lot of ways that one can use to understand certain languages. Like I said, uh, either you use a technology or you can even use a, um, a translator. Yeah, I remember one time we traveled elsewhere. Was it Ethiopia? And then we had a friend with us. We had a local guide with us. So anytime we go elsewhere and then want to buy something, and we have to say it in English, and then he will translate it and, and back. So I think that is also another means of people getting some extra money from, you know, uh, translating English into their language. So if you're watching this video, let me know what really motivated you or what really motivates you to want to move to the motherland. And if you're moving, did you consider the language uh, or the medium of communication or you just felt, hey, let me go. I'll just learn. Thank you very much for checking out my videos. Put up a comment. Let's have a conversation about it because it is really vital in our repatriation to the motherland. Peace.